Hello, what is up guys? Eman from Peso Smart PH here. Welcome sa pinabagong episode. Shout out to all the podcast listeners as well. I appreciate you all. Today, let's talk about short-term and long-term debts. Let's get started. So, yung short-term debt, sometimes called current liabilities, is a company's financial obligations that are expected to be paid off within a year or less. It is listed under the current liabilities section sa balance sheet ng isang business or ng isang company. The most common types of short-term debt are short-term bank loans, accounts payable, employee wages, lease payments or rent, and income taxes payable. We can measure the short-term liquidity of the company based on its quick ratio. And if familiar na kayo sa mga quarterly and annual reports na mga companies, you can find that for Philippine companies sa PSE Edge, then siguro you stumbled upon quick ratio na. The formula for the quick ratio is the current assets minus its inventory divided by the current liabilities. Then current liabilities man are a company's short-term financial obligations that are due within one year or less or within a normal operating cycle. Current liabilities are typically settled using current assets and lahat ito is nakikita rin sa balance sheet ng isang company or ng isang business. And yung mga assets na yun, yung current assets, are assets that are used up within one year. Then move on naman tayo sa long-term debt. Long-term debt is debt that matures in more than one year or even more. And it is often treated differently from short-term debt. Kaya magkahiwalay sila dun sa balance sheet. Pagka tinutal mo yung current and non-current liabilities or debt, then it will become the total liabilities. Pero pinagsiseparate sila kapag nasa, nasa books na, no? Or kapag... Uh, check siya ng mga accountants. So, accountancy-wise, magkahiwalay sila. Although, yung nature nila is almost the same. Ang magkaiba lang is again yung duration or yung maturity. So, for an issuer, long-term debt is a liability that must be repaid while owners of the debt, example bonds, account for them as assets. Then, non-current liabilities naman, also known as long-term liabilities or obligations listed on the balance sheet not due for more than a year. Various ratios using non-current liabilities are used to assess a company's leverage, such as debt-to-assets and debt-to-capital ratios. Examples of non-current liabilities include long-term loans, lease obligations, bonds payable, and deferred revenue. Para mas maintindihan natin yung mga short-term and long-term debts or liabilities, let's give an example. So yung kinuha ko dito or yung titignan natin is yung quarterly report ng Dito CME Holdings. Yung stock code nito is Dito. So dito sa number 13, page 30 ng PDF na to, andito yung mga interest-bearing loans and borrowings ng Dito CME ng company na to. The short-term and long-term interest-bearing loans and borrowings are broken down as follows. And kung may mga nababasa kayo na articles, like for example sa Rappler or like sa Philstar or kung anumang news outlet ito sa Philippines, ito din yung pinagbabasihan nila. So ito yung source nila dun sa mga figures na nakalagay dun sa mga articles na yun. And it's quite nice, no? If you can interpret this on your own kapag ka natutuhan na, oy, ito pala yung bank loans, ito pala yung current assets, ito pala yung mga short-term debts nila. So, let's take a look. Ito yung current liabilities. So, bank loans amounting to 64.6 billion pesos. Lease liabilities nasa 3.5 billion. The notes payable is 176.1 million. And total nyan is around 68.2 billion pesos. And an amortized debt issuance cost, babawas yan, 547.2 million pesos. So in total, yung mga short-term liabilities or short-term debt nandito is around 67.7 billion pesos. That is, that is really big. 
So this is due in around 6 months to 12 months. Then yung mga non-current debt naman, non-current liabilities. Lease liabilities is around 6.6 billion pesos. Then notes payable is a total of 338.9 million pesos. In total, that is around 16.9 billion pesos. And kapag ka, tinutal na natin yung current and yung non-current liabilities, ibig sabihin, i-add natin yung short-term and long-term liabilities or debt, making 84.7 billion pesos. Yung next nating titingnan is ito mga key performance indicators and relevant ratios ng dito. So dito natin ma-apply no, yung mga natutunan natin. And kumbaga dito magdi-divide divide na lang tayo para makakuha tayo ng mga ganitong results na mga ratios and mga percentages. So yung una is current ratio, nabanggit natin yan kanina, di ba? So current assets divided by current liabilities. So ngayong 2022, this is for the period ended June 30, 2022. So 0 0.03 is to 1. So that is not really a good number for the current ratio. Kasi yung current ratio, this compares all of the a company's current assets to its current liabilities. This measures a company's ability to pay short-term obligations or those due within one year. Most of the time, a company with a current ratio of less than 1 does not have the capital on hand to meet its short-term obligations if they were all due at once. So kaya di ba nagkakaroon ng mga negotiations si Dennis Uy and yung mga leaders or executives ng dito sa ibang pinagkakautangan nila para kumbaga ma-extend no, yung kumbaga maturity or kung kailan sila kailangan magbayad. And then, while a current ratio greater than 1 indicates that the company has the financial resources to remain solvent in the short term. Ideally, the current ratio should be 1 is to 1 or 2 is to 1. The next one naman, asset to equity ratio. So, formula nito, total assets divided by total equity. So, nagkaroon sila ng negative 8.54 is to 1. And again, that is also not good. The asset to equity ratio reveals the proportion of an entity's assets that has been funded by shareholders. So, ibig sabihin, hindi finand ng mga stockholders. No? So, hindi galing dun sa equity yung mga assets currently ng dito. The higher the equity to asset ratio, the less leverage the company is. So, ibig sabihin, sobrang leverage currently ng dito. Meaning that a larger percentage of its assets are owned by the company and its investors. The next one, debt to asset ratio naman. Total liabilities divided by total assets. So, ito, 1.12 is to 1 yung nakuha ng dito. A debt-to-asset ratio is a type of leverage ratio that compares a company's debt obligations, both short-term and long-term, to the company's total assets. And if a company has a total debt-to-assets ratio of 0 0.4, for isang example lang to galing sa Investopedia, then that means that 40% of its assets are financed by creditors. And then the other 60% are financed by owners. So, ibig sabihin yung mga shareholders ng company. For this instance, Dito finance most of its asset by creditors. Kasi yung kanilang debt to asset ratio is 1.12 is to 1. So, nag-overlap pa nga. The next one naman is debt to equity ratio. Total liabilities divided by total equity. So dito, negative siya. 9.54 is to 1. The debt to equity ratio compares a company's total liabilities to its shareholder equity and can be used to assess the extent of its reliance on debt. A negative debt to equity ratio occurs when a company has interest rates on its debts that are greater than the return on investment. Negative debt to equity ratio can also be a result of a company that has a negative net worth. If a company has a negative debt to equity ratio, then this means it has a negative shareholder equity. In other words, the company's liabilities exceed its assets. 
In most cases, this would be considered a sign of high risk and an incentive to seek bankruptcy protection. Although may mga explanation dito, yung executives or yung board of directors ng dito. And you can just read up on this on the lower parts dito. No? And explain nila kung ano yung plan no? for, for the future. Kasi yung dito telecommunity talaga yung main focus ng company sa ngayon. And they're, kumbaga, parang all-in sila dun sa investment na yun. And they're, they're willing to risk, kumbaga, at all para mag-work yung business na yun. And yung kanilang vision, no, na kumbaga mag-capture ng mas malaking market share versus the duopoly ng Globe and of course ng PLDT and yung kanilang subsidiary which is yung Smart. So that's yun yung lagay currently ng dito. And very interesting no pag binasa niyo itong quarterly report nila. Marami kayong matututunan and kumbaga makita niyo dito yung may mga may mga explanation na oh, okay ganoon pala siya nagwo-work. So hindi mo siya may isip agad and hindi Hindi super simple no na dahil lang hindi sila kumita ngayon kasi for example tingnan na natin yung ano tingnan na natin yung kanilang what they call this yung kanilang financial report yung net end well, net loss sila sa ngayon before going to the financials para nang dito tingnan natin itong last couple of lines or paragraph ito sa kanilang quarterly report so as of June 30 2022 the group the group reported a capital deficiency of 17.9 billion pesos. So, 17,971 to, di ba? Kaso may million dito. So, ibig sabihin, mag-add tayo ng 60. So, ibig sabihin yan, 17.9 billion pesos. From a capital deficiency of 2.5 billion pesos as of December 31, 2021. This was mainly attributable to the net loss recognized by the group in 2021 and 2022 driven by both pre-operating expenses and the start up commercial rollout of Dito Telecommunity. The company is thoroughly cognizant of the capital intensive nature of its investment in Dito Tel and is taking concrete steps to address this matter. So, yeah, super capital intensive netong, what you call this, netong telecommunications business and netong industry na to. And if you take a look at Globe and PLDT, even though consistent sila nagbibigay or nagtatali ng net income, if you take a look, if kinompute nyo yung kanilang gross gross profit margin pa lang, it's, it's on the lower side. So, hindi siya nag exceed ng around 30%. And then, kapag kinompute nyo na yung kanilang net profit or net income margin, it's kind of below 15%, something like that. So, kumbaga... Ang laki ng capital na kailangan para mag-generate sila ng malaki din na income. So, ito yung nangyari ngayon sa dito. And since hindi pa ganun kalaki yung kanilang market share, ni sila kumikita masyado. And then, these are, so ito, yung mga, yung mga plans sila in the future. No? Kasi, of course, may mga, may mga may debt call na. And kapag kailangan nilang bayaran yung mga utang na yun, ito yung mga pwede nilang gawin no, para mag ulit ng capital. So, yung number one is private equity placements. So, ito, kumbaga, kukuha sila ng capital from non-public companies, kaya private equity. So, magbibigay sila ng, for example, shares, no? Doon sa mga companies na yun. And, of course, sila lang yung pwedeng mag-own ng, ng mga shares na yun. And the number two is debt financing from either local or foreign financial institutions. So, yung debt financing... Dito na papasok yung ating pinag-aralan kanina or diniscuss natin kanina which is short-term and long-term debt. So, yung debt financing naman, it, it can... Pwede silang bigyan ulit ng loan no, para magbayad pa dun sa old loan. If, a, if an institution, specifically a bank, will grant them that. So, again, pwede yan sa local or foreign financial institutions. So, baga... Parang bailout siya. You can think of it like that. Then number three is tapping the capital markets. So yung capital markets, it's either pwedeng bonds, pwedeng treasuries, pwedeng stocks. 
So para pwedeng mag-follow follow on what they call this follow FOO follow follow on offer tama ba yung term ko sa sa mga stocks sila. So pwede sila mag-issue ng mga panibagong stocks para mapag-raise ulit ng additional na capital. So yan yung mga common naman to no. Like karamihan naman sa mga companies and sa mga public companies especially dito sa mga sa for example tech related na companies ganito yung ginagawa nila na financing para magkaroon sila ng additional capital para ma-realize of course yung vision and yung mission ng company and para maging profitable sila in the future so simula sa simula talaga pag ganitong lalo na capital intensive nga yung kanilang industry you need more capital and kailangan mong iran talaga ano like for example 3 years, 5 years, 10 years bago ka maging profitable. Right, ngayon naman, check natin yung dito stocks. Currently, nasa 3.79 pesos per share ang isang dito stock. So, fall from, from Greece, no? So, from, ano ba yung high niya in the past year? Siguro dito, August, yan. Week ng August 23. Highest niya at that time was around 9.14. So, 9.14 to 3.79. Sabi natin 78. Down ng around 58.65% in a year. And if we go back sa kanilang all-time high, which was 19. Uh, this was the price levels na nagbebenta yung kanilang mga executives ng sarili lang stocks, ng kanilang mga holdings. So, 19. Sabi natin, 19.03. Hirap naman gawin. Super exact. 79, 78. Down na ng around 80.13%. So, parang crypto lang. <laughs> ganun yung lagay currently ng dito stocks. But of course, since umabot na siya ng ganun kataas, may possibility na umabot ulit dun sa price levels na yun. If ever nga maging profitable yung company in the future. So, yung kailangan niya i-run para sabihin natin makuha lang yung 9.14 9.14 is 139% so that's that's really big no so malaking pump yan if ever mangyari and kung babalik tayo sa 19 pesos per share it needs to go up by around 398.45% so around 5x ng current market price Again, I'm not saying na impossible, but it's quite hard to do that. Especially nga ngayon na nagkakaroon ng debt crunch yung company. But hopefully, they can pull through. And hopefully, again nga, maging profitable sila in the future. Then ito, let's take a look na lang last one na sa financial reports ng dito CME. So, nagbigin na rin sila since nalabas na yung quarterly report. Meron silang quarterly financial report uh, period ending June 30, 2022. So, lahat to as it is kasi PHP lang yung nakalagay dito. So, yung mga pwede nyo, yung unan yung pwede gawin is kahit anong stock naman, no? kahit naman hindi, na, kahit hindi sila nasa losses. Like, for example, nagkaroon ng income. Pwede nyo kunin agad yung gross profit margin dito. So, i-divide nyo lang ito. Kukunin nyo to So, nasa na ba yung aking calculator? Mali. Ayan. So, kukunin nyo yung income or loss before tax. Tapos, di-divide nyo siya sa gross revenue. So, of course, dito, negative siya. So, ang laki actually. So, mumultiply mo pa yun sa 100. So, yung gross, uh, what do you call this? Gross profit margin is negative 507%. Kasi nasa losses nga sila. So, almost same lang, no? Kapag gaginawa natin sa net profit. So, yun yung mga unan yung pwedeng gawin kapag uh, tumitingin kayo ng mga stock. So, punta na lang tayo sa Globe since ito yung kanilang competitor. So, gross profit margin, just quickly. Tapos, hindi nyo na kailangan i-apply itong thousands no, kapag i-divide nyo ito. Kasi, same thing lang na may making result. So, di-divide nyo siya dito. Divided by 43.7. Then, mong dipilin siya sa 100. So, di ba, kita nyo. 17.81% lang yung gross profit margin ng globe. Then, ito net profit margin. Di-divide mo lang siya dito. So, dito, net profit margin is 13.75%. So, not really that bad, no? Nasa, kumbaga, nasa mid-level siya. Hindi siya masyadong mataas, hindi siya masyadong mababa. 
Then next one, isang competitor ulit since tatlo lang naman silang big players. Actually, dalawa lang big players then small player pa lang no. Yung dito. So dito same thing kahit di mo na ilagay yung millions, yung additional na six zeros. Pwede mo nang basta i-divide. Say again, same thing lang yung making result kasi mag-add ka lang ng mga zeros. So dito nasa 18.8%. So mas mataas ang counting sa PLDT sa gross profit margin. And then net income margin naman. Let's take a look. It's at 15.16%. So mas mataas siya ng konti in comparison sa globe. Alright guys, that's gonna be it for this episode. Sana may natutunan kayo. And if umabot kayo at the end of this video, thank you very much. I appreciate you. If bago ka sa channel ko, click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell para wala ka miss out sa mga uploads ko every single day. And you may also follow me sa mga social media platforms ko. I'm on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at mnpsph. Thanks again for watching and listening everyone. Stay safe. I'll see you on the next episode. Always remember, be better smart.